All right, guys, welcome back. This is part six of the RB porting series. So let's get into it. Okay, I thought I'd start this one off by hitting the board because I did talk about that in the last series. And I've had a few messages and guys asking me to explain this a little bit more. So let's just cover flow figures to start with and why we can't compare them. Until we have a CSA factor to compare those flow numbers, they mean very, very little uh, in, in the uh, four valve world. Now in the two valve world, we're pretty much all over this. So if you look at any small block Chev, you'll see we've got, you know, 165, 185, 195, 210, uh, 225, 227, 235, 245s. And each one of them, as they increase volume, they also increase their CSA. So now we can do some very, very basic maths with our minimal cross-sectional area and dial that dynamic velocity because remember a flow bench is measuring steady state it'll give us a, a good flow coefficient to tell us how well that whole size is flowing uh, to our 146 uh, factor but it won't tell us how well that cylinder head's going to work on a specific engine because we haven't done the calculations between the cubic capacity and rpm that that engine needs versus what the cnc head offers and most of the time in this industry it's just oh, it's a cnc head what does that tell us it doesn't tell us much at all especially in the four valve market two valve very different lots of guys are all over this so let's hit the whiteboard okay so i've done some diagrams and hopefully you're starting to understand that just just trying to compare uh flow bench numbers straight up really uh isn't the right way to do it for obvious reasons, and even uh, velocity factors. You can have a hand-ported, uh, you know, 161 cc's versus a seen seed head uh, at 176, and if the port shape's reasonable, the velocity factors are gonna be roughly the same on a flow bench, because they're not looking at the dynamic numbers, and that's when we do a minimal cross-sectional area that's based on a dynamic running engine, that 670 feet per second. Uh, so we really need to look at all the area ratios, volume ratios and everything if we're trying to compare the two together. But what I was talking about the other day, and I had a few questions about it, is how two, we can have two different ports, uh, yet the CSA is the same, so our velocity index is the same. And this is pretty much it. So the red line represents the CNC, and the blue line represents hand porting. We might just trim this slightly, shift the divider, we might pull this wall over. We're trying to keep it on size, not make it too big. Uh, same as the bowl, little of adjustments here. Where the C and C will go and put a big throat in them, they'll mash that wall over, they'll straighten that wall up, put in a heap more volume in it, and make, they'll rip all that out where we've just tidied it up. So now the port's, you know, 9, 10, 12% bigger than our hand ported cylinder head. So we have to look at our dynamic velocity. We have to do a true comparison because just looking at this, that's an 8% increase, 8.3%. But it's also got a bigger throat in it. So that's a standard valve. That's a one mil over, both at 90%. So we can keep, keep it true. So that's a 6% increase. Yet the flow figures are being told to us at say 450 or 500. These are both at the same uh, valve lift. That's not actually how you compare the same cylinder head with mods because we have to compensate for our LD ratio, our lift versus diameter ratio. So we can't just flow the head at the same lift with a bigger valve and go, see, the bigger valve works. It doesn't work like that. But an easy way to do it is just compare volumes. If you don't want to get into the complexity of flow coefficients and minimal cross-sectional areas and so on, uh, if we just look at the volume, and again, this is already a big head, RV26, so... They don't need to be too big. This is not 1950s. A lot of the stuff in the 90s was on the bigger side anyway, especially with window entries. You know, you look at some of the Mitsubishi stuff and uh, they, they were absolutely huge, not in the Evo. That's where you've seen a big difference. So uh, some of the port 
growth ratios just from window from seat to window but like 30 percent it's absolutely insane and this is the other thing a lot of cncs do they tend to put bigger val- um, bowls in them and open the windows up i've seen some of the rb26s at like 1750 square millimeters absolutely insane uh yeah, unless you've got a, a 3.4 litre doing 9 to 10,000 RPM, that port is absolutely useless to you. But a, a quick comparison I like to do is obviously volume ratios. So if we look at the flow figures, we say, okay, from 300 to 325 is roughly a, a 8.3%. But then if we look at the volume, we've increased the volume by 9.3%. So we've actually lost 1% there, even before we look at our our valve diameter ratios. So this is a real important part of understanding now flow versus area ratios versus volume. We've got to look at the whole picture, not just flow numbers. And as I said, the two valve world, uh, the, the guys are all over this. This is why the aftermarket industry casts head small and they put whatever CSA program in the cylinder head that's going to work for your combination like I was talking about really really small 185 small block cylinder heads for like 350s and 327s and then you know 227s uh, 235s for the bigger you know 400 plus cubic inch engines right you have to get that dynamic velocity dialed into your cubic capacity and that's what this sort of looks like we get the red line represents the CNC port and the blue line represents the hand ported port. We're going to have far more port energy in the smaller hand ported than we will in the CNC port because dynamically, just like that octane threshold, it's not even getting to the line. The airspeed's not even getting close to the point of degradation where the hand ported line's going right to the line and back down again. So this will always have more area under the curve, boost earlier and make better peak numbers, better boost per PSI. And as I said, in the two valve world, there's plenty of guys all over this. You know, Pete Murray, uh, Chad Spears in the States. So you got Darren Morgan. You got Brenton from Marusic Inductions. You got some really, really good head guys here and overseas that understand that we can't just look at this. We need to look at the whole picture what ratios have changed, what MCAs, our average cross-sectional area, we need to probe it, we need to look at our dynamic velocity, where where that falls into line. Anyway, I thought I'd break this down because it really is, um, it really is missed in the industry when it comes to twin cam stuff. But the, the, the two valve guys are all over it and hopefully this helps guys. Well guys, again, this is getting a bit long and uh, we haven't even got to porting, but I just thought I would stop for a minute and break down some f- the fundamentals of this, you know, one size all uh, really doesn't work, uh, especially in our, our CNC'd um, four valve market uh, where no one's really talking about volume CSA and stuff. It'd be like having one camshaft op- option. We know that won't work and nor does it with these uh, CNC'd heads until someone starts offering different uh, cross-sectional areas and volumes and air speeds and gives us proper data on them. Uh, it can be really, really misleading. Anyway, uh, hopefully this helps and uh, let's get back to doing some porting in the next one. Cheers, guys.